Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be taking a quick first look at what post ban standard best of one looks like. So Leyline of Resonance, the Mono Red Rakdos Fling decks have been banned uh, with the banning of Leyline in specifically best of one standard. So Paper Standard best of three, still a legal card, uh, but we did have it banned two days ago. So it's still a little early, but I just wanted to kind of give a lay of the land in terms of what people are playing thus far. Uh, give you some ideas in terms of what decks are doing pretty well, which decks aren't. Uh, we'll come back with the regular installment uh, in a couple days, and that'll give us a larger sample size. But for today, it's just kind of an early snapshot of seeing where things are at. So we're getting the data from Untap GG companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client, aggregates user win rates, gives a whole bunch of cool stats. Tracks your win rates. Uh, link is in the video description for Untapped. I will paste all these deck lists and timestamp it as always, so you can copy and paste to your heart's content. Uh, so if we're looking at popularity of decks uh, since the ban, for the day, Borosaurus has jumped into the top spot. So if we look at the Auras deck, it was kind of vying with the mono red aggro deck uh, at about 10-ish percent. It's jumped only 2% since the banning. So it hasn't absorbed the full metagame share, which is encouraging. Uh, this is still a fast deck, but it's a little bit more susceptible to things like temporary lockdown. Uh, targeted removal can be impactful, but they do have some protection effects you need to be mindful of. Uh, this is the Diamond to Mythic rank. Uh, we have Mono Black Midrange, which is like the Slasher Blood Letter combo, and then the Discard version. Uh, the Midrange version, the Slasher Blood Letter, tends to have a much higher win rate relative. Uh, but the, the mono black decks make up about 13%. So if you kind of group the theme of like a mono black mid rangey style deck, it is about as popular as the Auras deck. <laughs> the Oculus deck is coming in at third at about 6%. The Mirror Toxic has actually picked up a bit of popularity. We'll take a look at one of, one of those decks look like. Glorious Enchantments, Demir Control, and Yogari Midrange. Wrap it up. Um, if we kind of look just shifting down to Platinum, fairly similar. The Oculus deck uh, kind of jumps over, but we're seeing a bit more of the, the four-color domain, and we're also seeing a deck Mardu aggro. The Mardu aggro decks can be like hybrids of the Boros Aura deck with a couple fling effects. So we'll take a look at what those differences look like as well. Is kind of the pivot where a lot of the mono red players are or the leyline players are moving to. Um, so we'll jump into the decks. Quick uh, little programming note in the top right hand corner, we're 85 subs away from 50, 15,000 on the channel. Free, easy helps with the channel. So click that sub button. As always, likes and comments are greatly appreciated. I, it's crazy the, the numbers we've reached on the channel, and it's all thanks to your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's jump into it. So we're only looking at from Platinum to Mythic. We'll look at a couple decks there. Uh, but in the last like two days, Diamond to Mythic, it's 41,000 games that were played. So still an okay sample size. But um, with this, I can't go down to like 100, uh, under 100 game cap. So we can't see some of like the potential brews. We'll look to capture those uh, as part of the next video as well as much as possible. So Borosaurus does have the highest win rate. It's 69%. Nice. Um, and this deck here is a very strong linear deck. This was competing with the Leyline deck and oftentimes had a higher win rate than the Leyline deck. It just doesn't have the ability to kill you on turn two. Uh, the core of this deck, you have elements of the mono red deck. So your Heartfire Heroes, a couple Swiss Spears. You have Ember Heart Challenger and Manifold Mouse. So you have the mouse package in here, which care about Valiant triggers. So normally in the, like the mono red deck, you were targeting it with things like Monstrous Rage, Instant, stuff like that. This deck is looking to do it with auras predominantly. Sheltered by Ghost can help you to be removal. It's lifelink, it's ward, it's power boost, all built into one, triggering Valiant as well. Demonic Ruckus as evasion, eventually card draw, Feather of Flight, card draw, as well as evasion. Ethereal Armor is a huge power increase. You get the double strike trample effects through Manifold Mouse. And then Optimistic Scavenger lets you distribute counters once you start getting enchantments into play. And the big one here is Shard Mage's Rescue. So when I was saying like the mono black deck can have a good matchup against this if your removal lines up, but a well-timed Shard Mage Rescue on like a double striker with a lot of power 
can be lethal out of nowhere. The biggest downside with Boros, as I always say, is the fact you have to play Thran Portal. We don't have a Verge in this color, so it makes it a little bit worse. Uh, this deck also has potential, because you're not playing any sort of utility line, uh, to kind of run out of gas. This deck here is much softer to something like um, Temporary Lockdown, because you hit all the auras and everything like that as well. Uh, things like Elspeth Smite and Torch the Tower do get a little worse because they are increasing the power. So hard dedicated removal bounce becomes pretty effective as well uh, since you're just kind of resetting. So not sequentially the highest, but I wanted to kind of compare and contrast because there's similar elements here. This is the Mardu aggro. So this one here is got similar elements. Your heart fires, full set of Swiss spears, uh, no optimistic scavenger in this one here instead it is playing this uh, full set of slick shots manifold mouse uh, you could kind of pitch away the demonic ruckus so fewer kind of auras like the phase out of here you're just using ethereal shard mage and shelter by ghost and then you have a couple callous sword mage i think callous is probably worse if you're not playing the full scamp heart fire hero kind of plan the big bonus of scamp is you kind of double up on stuff it's like in this particular build, you're building up kind of power over time. It's not huge burst powers. You're not playing like turn inside out or stuff like that. So it's a pretty dead card early where you're seeing only two copies played in the deck. This one's also playing Rock Face Village. Uh, you might be able to squeeze in a Rock Face Village in this list here since you're playing the 12 mice. It just makes it a little harder for you to cast like some of your red uh, spells in the deck. So the next highest win rate deck is Azorius Oculus. So between the two highest win rate decks, we'll take a look at something in a sec, comparing how the matchup goes between the Boros Auras deck and the Oculus. And it'll make sense when I make this comment. So this deck has been pretty stock. They haven't updated too much. And something that I've been telling, saying with this list is you need a little bit more interaction in best of one, I think. This deck is kind of a port of the best of three version but it's not respecting the fact that the average meta in best of one tends to be more aggressive. So either playing more soul partitions can be reasonable, playing uh, there's the Afara's three mana bounce effect that costs uh, two less if the creature is attacking, and then it lets you surveil, which plays into your theme. I think you just need a little bit more interaction if you want to take this to the best of one meta, um, but otherwise the deck is all about kind of self-milling, uh, getting cards in your graveyard to bring back uh, a Horn Oculus or Hadi Jin with things like Helping Hand or Recommission. Uh, so you kind of get that value. It also enables both the power increase of Hadi Jin as well as hard casting the Oculus. So to that point, what I was saying, um, a good kind of head-to-head -head comparison. So this is from the Borosaurus perspective. They have a 58% win rate against the Oculus deck. So Oculus is winning 42%. So it is... The timeliness of some of the removals just not there so having a little bit more interaction early to disrupt because this one here they're putting a bunch of like power onto it so you want cheap kind of interaction to reset it so even if it's bounce it kind of fizzles them out in some degree uh, and even with something like sheltered by ghosts which has the the ward effect added having one mana answers uh, means that you can interact with it still within the first three turns of the game which is important i think um, so that's kind of interesting. The mirrors are always going to be 50% because there's always a winner, there's always a loser. Uh, so we don't have a huge amount of this just yet. Uh, I'll see going forward more if I can pull out some of these kind of deck comparisons to see how certain decks match up head to head, uh, provided that the data is available. I don't like doing this when the data is not available because then it's just like you're say I like I like stats to back things up. I don't want to just make things up, pull it out of my ass type thing. Uh, so we have the four color domain deck pretty stock um temporary lockdown i think gets much better with leyline gone just since there's not as much burst damage and you can afford to kind of wait to turn three now there's no turn two kills uh full set of archangels sunfall gets a little bit better as well in this format because it's not huge burst damage um, but pretty stock list here nothing out of the norm for this one here kind of again you may just want like because you do have Leyline, but Leyline's not going to be a turn two like we had in the past, uh, being able to cast it with the various uh, try lines. So you may just want like one more piece of cheap removal in the deck. So Demir Toxic is another list that came up. 
Um, and this list here, pretty budget friendly, all things considered. We have things like Bilious Skullwender uh, that can start putting Toxic. It can trade with a lot of the aura creatures, which is nice, provided that they don't have the first strike. The Whisper of the Dross is kind of narrow in the sense that it has a window to kill some creatures, but obviously it can kind of fizzle. The Proliferate does kind of benefit once you already get that first poison counter. Anoint is very good against a lot of these aggressive decks. Drown and Icker uh, is another reasonable card, kind of shrinking it down. Find is a kind of counter with upside. You have the Experimental Augury. So basically the core of this deck is get a poison counter on them and start proliferating. Serum Snare is another way to kind of bounce, reset. So you're just kind of tempoing them out, making them reset their stuff. The Store to Curiosity draws you card. Uh, you could give them poison counters with the Infectious Inquiry, draw you some cards. The Sacrifice can be reasonable too, especially if they're going all in on one or two creatures. Uh, helps you kind of deal with them that way there. And you get to take advantage of the Myrex and the mana base. Uh, so from Platinum rank, uh, these decks here are doing well in Platinum. Uh, there's not the population yet that we're seeing in the upper levels, but give you some more ideas. We have Selesnia Auras, 66%. So uh, the package seems very strong of using Sheltered by Ghost, uh, ethereal armor kind of strategies what green gives you is access to toadstool admire one mana ward two so deals with those early cutdowns kind of taxes them that even if they have cheap removal it takes till turn three to kind of interact with you so you can kind of stack it up there similar we have this honor guard uh, as a ward two so another thing that we can kind of throw some stats on the low toughness doesn't really matter as much because you have ethereal armor to buff that up uh, that gives the first strike and just a huge amount of power and then Sheltered by Ghosts, kind of the whole package. A couple ossifications in here with the mana base to accommodate it. And then Innkeeper's Talon as a way to put counters. Protection with Royal Treatment, so six protection effects. Talix also can start copying stuff because you're doing a lot of enchanting this deck. Then Azoria's Enchantment. So yeah, this theme has been quite prevalent throughout. Uh, Entity Tracker Enduring Innocence is kind of the card advantage engine. This version's not as fast, but a little bit more resilient and grindy. Uh, it doesn't get blown out by temporary lockdown, for example. You have a, a, at least one evasive attack. One to two, uh, then it starts copying. Maybe three, actually, because you can attack three times before it becomes a copy. You can stack this up, make it really big, and then get in through an unblockable attack. The Gremlin Tamer lets you go wide. This reduces the cost of your ores and enchantments. Through drawing cards, you make prof. Uh, kind of useful in terms of putting counters this does have a life gain element with enduring innocence as well as a shelter by ghost so you can make really big things and help in those races being in selesnia gives you access to of the decks we've seen the best uh, creature land uh, of the the ones that we've seen thus far so another kind of take on this we have the mono black slasher deck 61 percent so this is kind of a combo deck blood letter you attack with unstoppable slasher they the one hit ko you have Russia Dead with unstop with Blood Letter. That's I uh, use the last mode, and then they die from there. You have Unholy Annex for card draw. It drains them. If you have a demon, you're playing a number of demons in the deck, and then it's just, just another six six on the backside as well. I, I wouldn't play necessarily Hidden Necropolis. Don't think that card's that good. You might want like one to two copies of either Fountain Port or Myrex. Uh, this one's also got like the insatiable uh, avarice kind of combo in there with like shieldred or you can do it with blood letter to kind of drain them like that so lots kind of cheap removal in there tons of removal disruption and then some card to draw advantages and then a number of like combos to and then lastly we have gruel prowess so this deck's doing very well in best of three um so we're seeing a, an iteration of it in best of one um this is probably the deck i would take to like store championship and stuff in best of three so this one here, it's more the prowessy shell without the ley line. Heartfires, Swiss Spears, Umber Hearts, Manifold Mouse, Slickshot, a couple of questing druids. You have Turn Inside Out as a pump effect along with Monstrous Rage, Snake Skin for protection, and uh, Innkeeper's Talent puts counters every turn, can provide ward, and then triggers Valiant, and then four Torch the Towers in here. We may want to see as the format kind of goes, Torch was very good against the ley line deck. It does have the ability to sacrifice to scale up to three damage, um, but we may just want to go to shock to be more flexible to also go face. If the meta kind of shifts and there's a little bit more controlling decks, Torch is a dead card, shock always goes face. It just has the downside 
of not being able to scale up to three damage as well as not exiling, which is relevant when you're targeting stuff like Heartfire Hero as an example. But the early look, let me know if you've got any hot spice or your, uh, what your perception is of the format thus far, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.